Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Uh, up in the left-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Everett, a pilot in the state of California. And in our right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word, Brythwaite, uh, the last word in everything on this show. <laughs> uh, retired engineer for the state of California, so he's got extra time to really think about those words <laughs> and uh, I'll be your host uh, Jason McPhee and uh, so uh, in, and by the way too we have a, a, a email account you see uh, going by on the bottom of the screen um, if you have any comments or questions um, uh, we uh, yeah, I guess uh, uh, we you can uh, send them there and we'll try to answer those at the end of the show uh, and uh, maybe in an overtime session if you actually are uh, uh, available. And uh, also too, if you have any stories about how your job or uh, business has been affected by either COVID or these riots, uh, we'd love to hear about that. And if possible, we might even uh, interview you on a future show. Uh, so getting into the news. Uh, so uh, the market essentially is uh, given astronauts their first ride into space. Elon Musk and SpaceX X has uh, launched two astronauts, I believe, in the uh, they call it the Dragon Ship or Dragon Shuttle. I'm not sure what it was called, but uh, they sent that up there. Uh, they docked at, I believe, the space station, and then they came back down to Earth. So uh, it's a tremendous achievement for uh, you know the uh, science and our frontier out in space and it's being spearheaded by the free market. Uh, either you guys have anything, uh, any thoughts on that? Maybe a pilot should, but I, it's <laughs> great. I don't go over 12,000 feet around oh, here in my, my job. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I, I don't know. My only thought is what's Elon Musk, whose company's never turned a profit. What's he doing going off into space? I guess you don't even need to have a company that's turned a profit. I mean, there there have been a couple of months or quarters, maybe. No, nah, I, I think it was just a couple of months where he actually uh, did anything but go into the red ink that, as uh, David Stockman likes to say when he's talking about Tesla, uh, Tesla bleeds red ink like a machine gunned hemophiliac. So <laughs> oh, that, wow. That's yeah. David Stockman. So, so yeah, uh, how did that happen? How, how do you launch? Uh, how do you have the money? Well, I guess kind of like the government. No, no, it's not because he can't counterfeit his own money. So that mm. can't be it. I, I don't know how he did it. Um, yeah. But uh, I guess it's a great thing. It shows what you can do with other people's money when you can't make your own. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, you know, I, I, I think of these as baby steps, Tim. I, I agree. Maybe, maybe I oversold it a little bit as the, the market by itself. Clearly, uh, it's it's got a lot of government subsidies going on in there. However, yeah. it's 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 moving away from simply government trying to do it all itself, which is essentially kind of been crashing and burning over the last, you know, uh, almost literally over the last decade or two. Uh, you know, we lost a space shuttle. Uh, I can't remember which one was the last one we lost. Was it Endeavor or the? I, yeah, it was I, Endeavor. It was okay. Endeavor, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and since then, everything has been uh, you know ratcheting down our our program to send people up in shuttles, and and so now we you know our government is literally relying on other companies to come around and send them up. Either that, or they have to pay the Russians, and we know how how oh, but, oh, disdainful no, that would be to the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> pay the Russians to go to space. <laughs> Well, it, it is market in the sense that uh, Tesla can sell st their stock in, in it, yeah. uh, and uh, that's the only thing keeping them afloat, uh, just debt. And so, for, yeah, if you want to define our market as a casino that is fueled by uh, cheap interest rates and nothing but debt after debt after debt, then I suppose that you could say that that rocket launch was fueled by the market of debt in the United States, today's market. Um, so there you have it. Um, n nobody uh, put out a bunch of iPhone, you know, you don't see Apple doing it. So, you know, because it, 
they're the ones with the cash. You know, how come Apple didn't send up a space and take their cash and just waste it on on a trip to space? I, I, I don't even say. I, I guess, I guess I'm kind of throwing. Uh, I'm raining on uh, Jason's parade here a little bit. So I, I better stop. <laughs> you know, <laughs> terrible. God. Even though, even though I agree, I agree with all that you said about the government subsidies and the debt and all that. I, I totally agree. But I still think that this was an amazing display of human ingenuity and creativity. And when if if we can get the the government more out of out of space travel, I think we could accomplish a lot more. Because we are seeing some things here being done. I mean some some giant leap forward in terms of space travel here that is being accomplished. By well, not totally the marketplace. I, I I accept that point, but at least driven by some aspects of the market, the creativity, the ingenuity, and and the entrepreneurship and all that. I think all those things are good things. So, I, I think the key aspect of, of what we're seeing about it being at the market is at least price signals are starting to work their way in. It's not just Absolutely. we got to we got to do this because the Russians are doing it or we got to do this. We got to be the first to the moon because otherwise the Russians will be the first to the moon. Yeah. What do we do then if the Russians do it first, you know? <laughs> but, you know, now it's actually a little bit of price signal. So, I mean, they're looking at the price of the booster rockets and can they re reuse those? And, and that's, a, you know, part of what's made it cheaper. And then uh, the yeah. idea that uh, they could bring the price down enough that uh, wealthy people, you know, will start taking trips there, which will, you know, also uh, drive more innovation and in, into the field as well, just by trying to meet those needs. So, uh, you know, it is it is getting into the pricing was just out of most of our price range. I guess. <laughs> yeah, Probably will be for a lifetime. Yeah, sorry. Especially, especially us libertarians who are usually just dirt poor. So. Yeah. <laughs> Not always, but usually. <laughs> We're too busy complaining about, <clears throat> about uh, you know, debt-fueled economies and that kind yes. of thing. Keynesianism. Yes. We, Fighting Keynesianism, and we're not getting rich because of Keynesianism, because we're too busy fighting it. <laughs> Well, we, we should we should keep on fighting the good fight. I mean, we might we, we might live substandard, but we, we should keep on fighting the good fight. <laughs> yeah, good good thing internet is cheap. That's for sure. <laughs> three of us wouldn't be here. We know. No, there is one other aspect to all this too, and that's the competition factor. Because even though Elon Musk has has launched the first ones into space. There's a few other companies that are angling to do this, I think, in the future as well. I, I'm not sure if, uh, 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 oh gosh, that Branson, Richard Branson's company is, is yeah. are they trying Virgin? to get people up there? Yeah, Virgin, yes. that's it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's, uh, I think there might be another company, uh, Bezos is trying to do the same thing too with uh, over there at Amazon, isn't he? He's trying to launch some things up into space. So. I, yeah, I think at least they you have, know. At least they have their own money. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess he's trying to establish that, uh, you know, uh, prime out in space right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For all for all the moon people out there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, you never know. You may be up in the space shuttle and go, hey. Uh, Honey, we're we're out of uh, I don't know some something you can't find at the local space shuttle market, and uh, you you have to order it from Amazon. So, yeah. well, the, the the cool thing is is once we we have other companies out there that are trying to do this, then suddenly other other opportunities may open up. I mean, you, you know, people will yeah. be investigating markets instead of just the government deciding why we're up there and what we're doing. You know, have other people up there trying to figure things out too. Sure. Um, but right. uh, speaking of government, uh, uh, you know, uh, odd, uh, odd goals in government, I guess, is uh, uh, recently the University of California decided to stop using SATs and ACTs Ooh. to uh, yeah. measure people's admittance qualifications uh, uh, due to racial disparities. And of course, I guess that story is slightly bigger than when it happened. This, this happened about... Uh, 
a few weeks ago during the COVID yes. crisis when they, yes. and of course now there's a lot of other race issues going on, but uh, this is, uh, you know, you know, maybe one of those issues of, you know, well, what is the right metric? If you're going to say that uh, the SATs and ACTs aren't the proper metric, then, you know, what's the right metric? So, uh, yeah, so our Screaming Eagle has to depart for just a second. And uh, Leon, what's your thoughts on this? Well, you know, you know, this, uh, some years ago, George Bush, um, 43, I'm talking about, this is nothing but the soft bigotry of low expectations. You want to tell me that a math test, the ACT, part of the ACT and the SAT, both, both has a, a, a math component. It is a very large component, as a matter of fact. You want to tell me that is bias? One and one is two in every language, every culture, and in every background. Calculus is the same. Whether you're in China, whether you're in India, you're in the United States. How could a math test be biased? Yeah. You see, what is going on here is that you look at the inner cities of America, look at the public education, look at the disgraceful nature of it. And nobody's talking about that and nobody's doing anything about it. Year in, year out, we are giving these little kids diplomas. They could barely read it. They wouldn't teach them one and one is, is two. They wouldn't teach them reading, writing, and arithmetic. But every environmental thing, they'll teach them about it. And every other social justice issue, they'll teach them about it. But teach them the things that they're supposed to teach them. Yeah. That ain't happening. All we hear is this nonsense about, oh, the test is biased. They're well, not then. teaching our children how to critically think. When I, I and think then this we is, end up with this result, and then they want to talk this nonsense about, oh, we should ban the test now. Yeah. Well, I, I think this is part of the problem that you get into with a lot of these uh, uh, sort of uh, race problems that we're seeing is where you, you measure at the finish line and you see how people did, and then you go in and you try and figure out, well, okay, so how can we change things so that everybody right. finishes at the same right. place? And I, I think that's, you know, a mistake. Maybe the issue is... If we see that people are finishing at different places, it's not that we change the way we, you know, the it's not that we change the metric of the race, but then we try and figure out, well, how can we help people so that they exactly. do better in the race? <laughs> you know, I mean, how do we exactly. get better coaches? <laughs> you know, which exactly. which goes to your point of the uh, uh, the schools. Um, yeah. and, you know, it's funny too when you look at bias. You know, and this is one of the uh, the. The claims, because like, UC was being sued by this, that they were claiming racial bias in the testing, which is part of the reason they moved away from this uh, SAT. And by the way, they don't have another test yet that they're going to employ. They're just right. working on having one. So it's sort of like they've, they've been told there's a problem. They haven't said exactly what the problem is in the test other than it must be race. So yes. go figure out some new test. But, but if you look at international students and international students who take these tests, uh, as as you mentioned before, they they if anybody is is has bias against them, it's going to be these international students who are taking the test in a language exactly. that's not their native language, and these international students they are they do do a little worse in the critical reading, uh, on average, but they do much better in the math. In the math well. section, yes. So which which really like you're saying, math should be the same everywhere, and and to me that indication that they're doing better in math is is an example that hey well, we're not teaching math very well then if people aren't doing very well in these tests. So that's, that's my two cents on it anyways. Yeah, no, but but even, 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 I mean, that point about the international students is a good one, but you don't even have to go international. Right here in America, Japanese Americans and Indian Americans are knocking this test off, or, or, or doing, doing well off the charts on, on this test. And Asian Americans in general, as a matter of fact, doing better than even white students, as a matter of fact, on average, if you look at it. So, so what? We, so, what should we be saying? Maybe the test is biased against white people. That's what we should probably be saying. This, this yeah, is maybe, nonsense. This is maybe, just garbage. Maybe, maybe the test is biased against people from the United States. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, maybe, maybe if you're an international student, you have to take a few less points going into the test. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I mean, I mean, the the whole problem here. I mean, if if, if we can just look, look look at this thing, the whole problem here is the public school, especially in the inner cities, are horrible. And 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 
these students are not getting what they need. They're not getting the foundation of a good education that will push them forward in life. I mean, when I grew up, when I grew up, I was doing calculus when I was 14 years old. Believe me, I was. 14 years old, I was doing calculus already. You think there's any place, I mean, probably a few exceptions, any place in America where that is going on right now, especially in the inner cities of America? And But the point is, though, there was nothing special about me. Anybody who grew up in my times, grew up in Trinidad, would tell you the same thing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I saw something kind of similar when I was in uh, junior college and I was taking calculus and I was I, I was kind of a late bloomer as a student. So I was in my late 20s when I was taking calculus. But um, <clears throat> I, I was in the same class with a 13 year old kid who was taking calculus. And and, you know, and, and, and you know, I was I was you know, I beat him on a test or two. But <laughs> 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 the converse isn't something we want to talk about. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but he was, uh, you know, in, in my mind, it was it was more that the kid was immersed in his, you know, his family supported him in this. And, yes. and that kid actually went on to MIT, I believe at around wow. at wow. the age of 15. Wow. So, I mean, you know, Jeez. but it, to me, I'm not, I'm not seeing that necessarily as genius. I'm just seeing that that's, that's how underperforming we are as a society. The idea that we that's place so little value on these and, and that, that we do so poorly on math compared to the rest of the world in these standardized sure. tests. So, yes. Yes. uh, but uh, yeah, Talk, talking about talking about um, about uh, little kids. I mean, there was a just recently a, a thirteen-year-old kid who came out of some uh, some uh, junior community college with four associate degrees or something. He's thirteen years old. Uh, mm. he, he, was, he got some full scholarship to I don't know University of Nevada, one, one of them. But he's thirteen years old. He has four associate degrees. You know, I said, yeah. wow. You know, I'm impressed. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, it seems to me, I mean, there's a tie into this earlier topic we were talking about, too, which was, um, you know, getting competition into space. And you look at how long that took for us to just start breaking some competition. In. Right. And now yes. some of the exciting things that we're about to have happen. Why not in education, too? I mean, you know, the idea that we've had this government monopoly on education from K through 12, essentially, uh, yeah. you know, it's it's, uh, you know, the amount of stagnation that we may have had from not having people competing for uh you know it just in in performance you know i mean for a parent to be able to look and say hey the alumni of xyz school down the road is you know that they're all doing great you know yeah. so you know i'm, I'm going to send my kid there but no we can't because you know you're locked into a zip code you're you're exactly. locked into some exactly. standard formula that has to address every kid um, you know, it's funny that the Hoover Institute, uh, they, they had a funny little video that they had where they took the analogy, suppose we did public ed the way, you know, uh, suppose we did, we did our food the way we did public ed. So, you know, yeah, you know, everybody gets food, but you got to go to the government cafeteria in your neighborhood based on your zip code. And you're going to get, you know, whatever the lunch lady serves there and, you know, you're going to like it or else. You know? <laughs> and, and yeah, you can go to another government ca cafeteria in another neighborhood, but you got to get permission. <laughs> yes. and, and only if there's open <laughs> spots there, then you can go there. You know? <laughs> and I mean, how absurd that idea would be to most people if we limited our food choices to, to mm -hmm. such a model. We, that's what we do with education, you know? Exactly, so. exactly. You know, many years ago, many, many moons ago, I mean, I don't know how long ago it was, Milton Friedman came up with this very good idea, okay? Okay, we have the, the, the public education the way it is, but we can still fund public education, but give the vouchers, give vouchers to the parents and let them decide whichever school they want to send their kid to. They're gonna use the voucher as long as it's being used for education. Let them decide that. And then yeah. you have the competition that you're talking about. And I'm, 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 I'm all for that. I, I mean, I, I, I wish the government was not really involved in education. I wish there were, we have we could have more competition in it and all that kind of stuff. But fine, let us grant it that they are involved in education. That's fine, in the public education. But yeah. give, give the vouchers to the parents and let if you want to send your kid wherever you want to send a kid, then do that. And if I want to send my kid someplace else, then I should be able to do that, whichever school it is. Yeah. But the, we have this monopoly on just like you're saying, where, oh, I live at 95758, so you know what? I could only send my kid to this particular school or that particular school. 
Come on. Yeah. Look at, our, I, look at our education system. It's not working. We're not going to do something else. Well, you know, and it's funny, too, because one of the illusions is, I mean, almost all these public schools operate under very similar guidelines. The, the real issue is the zip code that they're in. And so, you know, what happens is you wind up getting a different peer group that your kid is with, depending upon which zip code you're in. And that's really what, what you know, so you would think, oh, well, hey, some public schools do better than others. But no, that's kind of an illusion. It's really more about what the, the, the fact that if you're in a zip code where parents have more time to spend with their kids who can, you know, spend more money on their kids, whatever, they're probably yeah. going to do a little better than the than the district, you know, that doesn't have that. And, they, you know, that's that's part of what competition might help is it with competition. You can have schools that are tailored to meet the needs, uh, the varying needs of different kids in different areas. Some some kids are going to need more counseling with a second language. Some kids are going to need, you know, uh, you know, maybe you know, in more. Math. maybe in math or something. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Or, you know, yeah. you know, a, a parent who had a high value in the arts could send their kid to a school that focuses more on the arts or, you know, by by the same token, go. math and science. You know, I mean, it, sure. it's, it's yeah. just. You know, it's it's unfortunate, but uh, you know we, you know, it seems to me that STEM and math and science that's that's really a lot of the key to the future. You know, and the, and, and the competition around the world, and the idea that we don't try to do the, the most we can to to engage competition on those areas. You know, so that parents can look and say, hey, I want my kid to be that you know engineer. I want my kid to you know be the next Neil deGrasse Tyson or somebody else, but. Yes. You know, it's like, well, sorry, you've got whatever your school has, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, that's it. You know, and it's all about the kids, though. They'll tell you every time. Yeah, it's all about the kids. <laughs> but when, when you think about it, we, we love to say we love to say we are the greatest country in the world. And I happen to believe that. OK, but we're not going to remain there if we're not educating our children. It's not going to happen. Yeah. And we are not educating our children. At, at least a whole swat, a big swat. Of our kids yeah. are not being educated, at least not being properly educated. So this is yeah. a this is a long term problem we're going to be facing down the road, and we'll have to deal with it. Yeah, and 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 to top it off, we're we're paying top dollar too at the same time. I and mean, people like to say, "Hey, we need to spend yes. more money on education." But if you look at how much we're paying compared to you know what people in the uh, you know rest of the world are paying, we're actually yeah. paying pretty high levels, and and it's it's uh, the results, you know. It just, they seem like they could be better. <laughs> a lot better. A lot better. Yes. Yeah. Well, speaking of, uh, of uh, you know, crazy government institutions, uh, you know, one of the things that's come up in these, uh, you know, riots is uh, it's brought to light some of these bail reform laws that we've had recently. And the idea that, uh, you know, it, it may have gone in there with some good intentions, but uh, it's 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 quite weird when the police are grabbing somebody who is caught breaking in and burning a store and they take them in that night to the jail and then with bail reform they immediately have to release the, <laughs> the yeah, guy who was just looting uh, during a riot which is is uh, pretty insane but that's actually what we have occurring in quite a few big cities New York is suffering with this and there's quite a few other major areas as well where they literally are releasing the prisoners as fast as they catch them in order to, uh, you know, for, oh. satisfy these bail reform laws. So. And, and, it, and, you know, I think there was one, one, um, one well-known case about a guy who was a bank robber or something like that. I think he was arrested four times within 24 hours or something like that because of this, this very, these very kind of laws. You see, these, these team blue liberal type types, they put these laws in place, or they do it, they call it reform. They call it reform. And they never ever think of what are the consequences of these laws upon the citizens who are this they are supposed to be serving. Well, and there have been cases of where these people went into prison, they let out a, a few hours, a, a few hours later, and they're back on the streets committing crimes in the in this in the in, in what's going on right now. They were looting before, they're looting after, they're committing arson, they're doing all of these things. Because we have these wonderful reforms, and they, all of them are occurring in these major cities where we had these governors and 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 mayors like Bill Bill Bill, Bill uh, Bellagio, and all of these people, they don't care about the people they're supposed to be serving, and they're talking about reform. They're calling this reform. It's unbelievably stupid and dangerous too. 
We've got our screaming eagle of freedom back in. Did yeah. you want to jump in on this? <laughs> I don't it, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm out of the loop in a way. And Leon was probably saying something I would agree with anyway. So, well, you know, what, he's, one... he's had the final word. <laughs> well, you know, I, I wanted to dovetail to that word a little bit. You got the final word on that, but you know, the, uh, uh, the COVID as well, we had something very similar happening with COVID where, Prisoners were being released also because of a fear that they might get COVID. And it's, you know, it's, it's just kind of shocking on top of all this. And you'd have to wonder if, if all these prisoners being released with COVID doesn't have something to do with people who are rioting as well. Uh, you know, certainly that could be part of the same cohort, you know, but, uh, you know, one of the uh, uh, things that uh, I was, um, uh, you know, a little bit, it, it brings to mind on all this is, who are the laws supposed to protect in the end? Are the laws supposed to protect honest law-abiding citizens who are working hard to pay their taxes and, and you know, be part of the market? Or is it supposed to be out there to protect the guy who is looting and, and pillaging <laughs> and doing whatever crimes it took them to get into jail in the first place? No. I guess uh, that's the last word on that one. <laughs> well, I, I was going to wait for him to, to say something. He just, he just came back, yeah. so I was waiting yeah. for to, 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 to no. give his piece on this. What? No, no, it's, uh, uh, it's just a complete mess. I mean, we're, it's, it's escalating, and so you're getting the, the – both sides are, are doing these outrageous things. Uh, you know, the, the police are pushing some old guy down. He starts bleeding from the ear, and – injured him for no reason and uh the uh the other uh the rioters are pulling people out of out of uh trucks and vehicles and things and beating them senseless and and or killing you know killing people too well tim tim, tim we're almost out of time yep. and uh let me uh in speaking of complete chaotic messes uh, i wanted to get into our uh, knucklehead yeah. noise patrol before the end here and uh, CNN's Chris Cuomo was recently quoted on television as saying, please show me where it says protesters are supposed to be polite and peaceful. <laughs> yeah, first, first Amendment. Yeah, the, first, yeah. the First Amendment, it says uh, we have the right to peaceably assemble. That's yeah. peaceably. That's without breaking things, stealing things, beating people up. That's that's in the First Amendment. So if I had to show him somewhere, I'd say, what's his name? De Blasio? Was that him? Or? No, 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 Chris, Chris Cuomo. Cuomo. Chris Cuomo said that. Yeah. I'd say, Miss, Mr. Cuomo, it's in the First Amendment of the Constitution that maybe you ought to read it for yeah. a change. Yeah. That's where it's at. You well, I know, I, I'm sure he'll feel different. I'm sure he'll feel different if it was his home being looted. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But uh, I think we're going to yeah, have to leave it there. But we can we can continue this in the overtime. But uh, yeah, for now, that's the end of the uh, normal podcast. Uh, so thank you for attending. And if you want to stick around, uh, we will continue uh, our thoughts on these last issues here on uh, Counterpoint Overtime. <laughs>